I know. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for showing up on a Wednesday. I appreciate that. I was worried, but you guys came, so thank you. How many of you were here last year when I came? All right, not th thank you. I expected more return customers, but that's cool. Thank you so much for coming back. Everyone else, uh, all right. I appreciate that, thank you. Man, that hurts my heart. Where are those people? We sold it out last year too with a hundred. Where are those? There was like ten people to clap. Where are those hundred people? What's that? Journey and Toto. Journey and Toto's tonight. Yeah. Let's get the hell out of here. Like, what are we even? What are we listening to me for right now? Journey and Toto. <laughs> it's not even. Oh man. You don't even mean that to hurt my heart. And you're like, dude, it's not your fault. I mean, you're still sold out, but those people didn't come back because Journey and Toto are in town. And I, I, gotta, I gotta start looking up the schedule next time. You can't just look at all the murmuring. They're like, we could leave right now and still catch Africa <laughs> before Journey comes on. <laughs> Man, I guess I'm on a good trajectory. I'm playing on the same night. We're both playing on a Wednesday, aren't we? <laughs> Me, Journey, Toto. There's a lot going on in Savannah, so. That's so funny. That's how it goes sometimes. I love Savannah. This is my second time here, and this is the most beautiful haunted city I've ever been to. It's clearly haunted, all the buildings. It's like when they built it, they're like, this is gonna be great when... <laughs> It's like when they designed the buildings, they're like, it's beautiful now, but wait till we're all dead. And we're gonna haunt these buildings. Cause those buildings, even when they were new, people were like, ugh, gorgeous, but can we sage it before we move in? They're like, no, it's a new building. Like, mm-mm, I don't know, I, I feel it in there, man. I went on a ghost tour the last time I was here. Uh, last time I was here, I went on a ghost tour because I had just had my first ghost experience that month. Uh, this time last year, uh, I was molested by a ghost in, uh, in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, oh yeah, you were here, you remember that. Yeah, I remember it too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen every day, I hope. Imagine, imagine that, imagine if it did. You're like, I gotta hire a ghost lawyer, because I am being molested by ghosts every day. Yeah, I was, at, I was performing in Tucson, Arizona at Hotel Congress, which is a notoriously haunted hotel. I didn't know that. Uh, I don't do a lot of research before I show up. That's why I'm performing on the same night as Journey and Toto. <laughs> so I just showed up to the venue and they gave me a free hotel room and I didn't know. And I'm like, ooh, this looks spooky. And we find out it's very haunted. And uh, just to give you a quick gist of the joke, it's a true story, we're sleeping and I hear a cough, and then I feel someone standing next to me on the bed, and then I just feel a hand right here on my hip, and the hand is searching, and it gets to where it's going, and it gives me three how do you do's, and I, yeah, I screamed. I, that's what you do in that situation, you know? And so after that, I was obsessed with ghosts, you know, obviously. I was never a ghost guy before that, but now I'm in that world. Obviously, I've been touched. I'm in that world. I'm a ghost guy. So then we came to Savannah, and I found out Savannah is one of the most haunted places. So we went on a ghost tour. Some, uh, some guy in a ponytail took us around, and it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, you guys have had some bad things happen here. <laughs> The creepiest one is that flu thing you guys had. I love how I keep saying, I don't mean COVID. I mean like way before that. You guys had uh, the yellow fever, yeah. Where people, like they didn't have the medical equipment to realize someone was dead yet. So they just went, man, that guy hasn't woken up in a while. And so they would bury him in a crypt, but then they kept burying all these live people, like too many. And I like how you guys are pulling back. This happened over a hundred years ago. We can talk about it. You guys are like, too soon. No, 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 it's, it's, this is the time. If there's ever a time, 
it's right now. It's on. It's 2023 Wednesday. Journey and Toto are in town. <laughs> we're gonna talk about the yellow fever back in the 1800s. Uh, <laughs> they thought they were dead, and but then they kept like adding more bodies to a crypt, and they realized there's like people like trying to dig out like a horror movie. So their cure to that wasn't like, hey, let's make sure they're dead. Their cure was, hey, what if we tie a bell <laughs> to their finger? So if someone wakes up in a grave and then goes, ding, we'll go, we got a live one. <laughs> they treated it like the orders up at a Waffle House. Ding, 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 like, it's just why don't you make sure they're alive or dead, you know? I don't know, it was cool. I, I very much enjoyed it. I, uh, I flew in this morning. I came in uh, on a red-eye flight. That's when, because I live in San Diego, so anytime I perform on the East Coast, I got to either leave the day before or the night before, and I like leaving the night before. So no sleep. I land, and I get in a rental car at 5 in the morning from Atlanta, and then I drive out here. And uh, hey, it's the, it's the job I've chosen, okay? <laughs> this is what I chose. I'm a road dog, baby. That's who I am. <laughs> That was the coolest I've ever felt, was that one sentence right there. <laughs> Everything came off so smooth. I'm a road dog, baby. And I was like, ooh, I almost believed it as I delivered the line. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, uh, when I have a red-eye flight, that means uh, I have Starbucks and McDonald's for breakfast. That's what happens. I don't know if you've ever slept the whole night and then you wake up in a new town, but you need food and coffee and then more. Like, your appetite is never satiated. So I got uh, Starbucks and then I went to McDonald's. I went to a McDonald's here. That's where, that's where I got it. And I was happy because I went to a bad McDonald's. And because if you're a McDonald's fan like I am, you, yeah, the downtown one. Yeah, that one's a rough one, isn't it? It's not the best McDonald's, and I like a bad McDonald's, okay? I love a bad McDonald's because I'm trying to be healthy, and every time I go to a good McDonald's, I'm like, damn it, I'm gonna be back. <laughs> like, soon, I might be back today, because this is a good McDonald's. But thankfully, it was a, when it's a bad McDonald's, I'm like, oh, I won't be back for at least a week, you know? <laughs> They'll be able to keep me away for a week, but this is a rough McDonald's. This is one of those McDonald's where, like, uh, the employees don't even say, like, hey, what would you like? You just know it's your turn when their eyes open wider. <laughs> Have you been in that situation when you know it's your turn, you're just standing there, and they go... <laughs> and you're like, a McMuffin, please! <laughs> and I'm like, I love a good, bad McDonald's. Like, I love it. The food came out, not hot, warm. That's how it comes out. Just warm. You can tell that that sandwich wasn't for you. That was that, that was a sandwich somebody else ordered, and they couldn't take the disrespect, and they left. And then you just came in and ate someone else's. So that's what a bad McDonald's feels like. A bad McDonald's feels like eating someone else's breakfast. That's what it feels like. You're like, this wasn't for me, but I need this right now. I feel like that girl that snuck into the bear's house and you're like, this one's lukewarm. <laughs> but I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. But yeah, that was, was, I like a good bad McDonald's. I even got pulled over on the way. I got pulled over by a trooper. Uh, I like your troopers out here. You guys wear the hats. The, with a hat with the belt. The hat with the belt and the hint. <laughs> it's very aggressive. I like that. I got pulled over by the hat with the belt. And they were very polite. The guy was, he was polite. He came in, yeah, yeah, he was polite to me. I don't know. I, I think because I, I, I'm very chipper, you know? I, I, I was like, hi! Like, <laughs> people don't, cops don't expect that, you know? You pull someone over at 5.45 a.m., you expect to, I wasn't speeding! You expect an argument. And I was just like, well, hello! And then he was like, whoa! <laughs> and I was like, yeah! <laughs> Where are you headed? I'm on my way to a bad McDonald's, okay? So, what seems to be the issue? And he said, I swerved. And I did, because I, I swerve all the time. <laughs> I'm not a good driver, and I don't have a good rental car. Like, the new rental cars correct you. I, if you ever get like a new, or you just own a new car, uh, but I don't own a new car. I have, I get new cars through the rental shacks and stuff. And when you're, like last week I was in Cleveland and I was in a car and I kept drifting because I, I get bored. It's so boring. 
You know, like all day, all day, there's screens and there's stuff to look at. And then I gotta drive for three hours from Atlanta to Savannah. I get bored and it's just straight. So I'm looking at stuff. And while I'm looking at stuff, I veer. You know? <laughs> I veer. That's what I do because it's boring. And, well, and then he saw me veering. And it wasn't a new car. It wasn't like a cool rental car that straightens you out. Like I was in a GMC Terrain or something last week that actually had a buzzer in the seat and they'd zap you in the ass. If you started to drift, they'd give you a little taser shot right to the ass cheek and you go, straighten out. And you're like, oh, <laughs> And then it would also straighten you out. But this is a Nissan Altima, so they didn't, Nissan doesn't care, all right? <laughs> Nissan doesn't care. They don't care about your life. They're like, you, you drive this thing. Okay. <laughs> and so I got pulled over. And uh, he was like, you tired or something? And I'm like, no, no, I'm pretty awake, actually. <laughs> and he goes, I noticed you were swerving. And I had to come up with a lie. and Because I didn't want to just say, I'm bored. You know, like that's... <laughs> I don't, you know, you know, that's not the proper way to handle that conversation with a guy. I'm sorry, I'm just really bored right now. And uh, I saw something that with that away. And so I, I told him I was trying to set the cruise control, but I never know how to, you know. Because I'm, that's also me. When I get into a rental car, I don't set anything up. I just leave. I just get in the car and I leave. And I wait till I'm on the interstate doing 80 going, whoa, none of the mirrors are pointed the right way. <laughs> Nothing is pointed the right direction. <laughs> How do you turn the AC on? Let's figure out the buttons now when I'm on the interstate. And so I was trying to set the crew, I don't know. He bought it and, uh, and he let me go and he gave me one of these. <laughs> With that, you know, where they just touch the brim and I was like, <laughs> and he let me off, man. It's an exciting, I don't know. It's an exciting run. I like, I want a new, I rode in a Tesla recently. I don't know if any of you have an obnoxious friend that owns a Tesla. <laughs> I have one. I have a friend, not a Tesla. And he, he was like, we're gonna go do the show and he, we were in the Tesla. And, and I keep calling it a Tesla because he kept calling it a Tesla. Like he, I've never had someone talk so much about their car before, you know, like while we were in, he goes, you know, the Tesla, da, 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 the Tesla. And I'm like, I drive a Honda Fit. That's never come up. <laughs> like if you and me are in my Honda Fit, I'm never going, <laughs> you know. That's a cup holder over there by your leg. <laughs> this is a Honda Fit, you know. <laughs> like, I'm not bringing that up. He just kept talking about the car and he kept pronouncing it weird. He kept saying Tesla, Tesla. And he was like, you know, the Tesla. And it got to the point where I'm like, am I saying it wrong? <laughs> or are you trying to change the way everybody says it? Because he just kept saying, Tesla, Tesla. And I'm just like, what is that? Is, like, is he being like a weird? Because I hate those people. You know, those like how to pronounce things, you know? They're like, <laughs> actually, it's a croissant. You know, like, <laughs> one of those people. I hate those people. I'm like, shut up and give me the croissant already. Where? <laughs> Trying to get some breakfast in. It's a croissant. It's a Tesla. I'm never getting a Tesla. Not just because I can't. I see, I said it like he wanted me to. And that's not how I want to say it. I want to say the way I want to say it. Tesla. That's what it is. I'm never getting one. Not just because I can't afford it, but even if I can, I'm like, mm mm, I don't want it. Because do you know what happens when you got to charge it up? Like, we drove all the way up. And then we had to just charge it up. You just got to park in a Target parking lot and sit there like you're a phone plugged into the wall. <laughs> and then just talk while you're going, that's not enough to get home? We still got to, we still have to have this fake conversation right now? Put a gas tank in this thing. Let's at least get it home. You know? I want to save the planet, but not that bad. <laughs> That's why I got the Honda Fit. It has leaf mode. I hit the... <laughs> you know, I hit the leaf when I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm burning too many carbons right now. Let's cut some of the ponies out of this bad boy. Bring it down on leaf mode. It's been a... Last week was interesting. Last week was weird. I, uh, I had to take a cat to the vet. My, my cat, Miso. Uh, uh, my fiance's cat that I've adopted with my heart, uh, Miso, 
we had to take it to the vet because we thought it was we thought she was sick and it's hard with a cat because they always look kind of sick <laughs> do you know what I mean like I think that's part of cat ownership where you're just like is that cat okay <laughs> I don't think it's okay. That's most of cat ownership, going, I think the cat is sick. And then we do the thing we always do. We're like, let's give it a week. Let's see if it's still doing whatever that is right now in a week, and then we'll make an appointment. And so it kept doing like this weird cough thing. So I was like, all right, let's call the vet. And then we go in there, and then the vet asks you all these questions, and they make me feel so bad, because they make me feel like a bad cat parent, because I don't have the answers to any of these questions, all right? And the vet was like, uh, has Miso been eating? Has she been eating well? And I'm like, what do you think, we eat together? Like, do you, do you think there's a table? And we're like, Miso, you didn't finish your peas. Like, what do you think happens? I throw a kibble in a bowl and it goes down. And then the next day I refill it. I'm not keeping track, you know? And then she also asks, is, is Miso having diarrhea? And I'm like, well, what's that look like in sand? <laughs> I think I could use a picture of what that might look like in a bucket of sand, because <laughs> otherwise it looks like everything else, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think so. I think she's okay with the diarrhea. And he's like, has she been lethargic? And I'm like, it's a cat. I, I, compared to what? <laughs> compared to sleeping 15 hours a day? Yeah, she's bumped that up to 20, is what she's done. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. But she's feeling better. They gave her a shot, and they took her temperature, which is the weirdest. They do it old school. They take a, a, a pet's temperature. They do it the way they used to do it to us back when they used to tie a bell to her finger when they thought we were dead. <laughs> they just, <laughs> they lube up a and they just, and it's, it's not fun. Like, and they tell you it's gonna happen and you have to hold your own cat. And I, <laughs> which just feels like, I'm like, you do it. You're not gonna see, like, I gotta go home with her. She's gonna remember, you hold the cat, you know? And then you have to hold it. And then just like, she just gave me the weird, as soon as it went in, she just went. I can't tell if you're lethargic, so I got... <laughs> we have to take all the appropriate precautions. This is just the way it goes, man. I don't know, that was last week. Last week was rough, man. Last week was rough. I did, I went, I had to go get health, I tried to get health insurance. I signed, did you know you can't? Did you know you can't just get health insurance? Like, whenever? Is the, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a health insurance season. Like, it makes sense. Like, I, they had the ads, like, oh, open enrollment. But I thought they were just trying to, like, you know, promote to people with, like, New Year's resolutions or something. <laughs> like, hey, while well, you're getting in shape, why don't you get some health insurance, you know? And I'm like, ah. And then I want, I'm like, I'm going to get some health insurance. And then I called Kaiser Permanente, and they're like, you can't. You can't. And I'm like, what? This is America. <laughs> what do you mean? Imagine if other things work that way. Imagine if you're like, I'm going to go get a new iPhone. <laughs> in February? <laughs> you can't get an iPhone in February. you got to wait between August and September. Everybody knows that. Summer solstice. That's when you get iPhones. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Why are we treating health insurance like a pumpkin spice latte? Like, why are we doing that? You can only get health insurance. And they told me that. They're like, we, we, we can't get it. And I'm like, but my testicle hurts now. <laughs> like, if your testicle hurts now, you just gotta wait till next Thanksgiving. That's what you gotta do. That's what I did. Not to get too personal, I got a twinge of a pain. I got a toothache in my left testicle. And... <laughs> Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. It's a toothache, and it's dull, and it's there, and it's ah, and it's not, it's not consistent, but it is. And I just wanted to get it checked out, and I can't. That's illegal right now. I gotta go find some guy in an alley or something. Get me helped out. I mean, it was ridiculous. What's that? Get the ghost to check me out. Maybe that's what he was trying to warn me about last year. 
should get that one checked out right there. That wasn't a molestation. That was that was a checkup right there. <laughs> ah, it's scary. I think it's gonna be fun, but I thought about it. You know, Emma's like, "What if they got to get rid of it?" And I'm like, "What?" And she's like, "What if you got to lose one?" And I'm like, "Well, that sucks." And then I was just going through like the thought process if they have to, if I have to lose it. And I'm like, do they fill it up with like a fake one? You know what I mean? Do they just leave it empty? Just like, just like a half empty grocery bag? Like why would you do that? Fill it up with some, even it out. Throw a couple quarters in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> These are the things in my head right now. Last week was hard, man. The vet, I took my cat, that's how I am. My cat got taken care of and me, they're like, we can't help you. And I was like, I had nothing. I guess I'll talk to you on Thanksgiving. Now I had to go get a new phone. I had to get a new uh, iPhone because my last one, uh, I paid off and I think they found out. <laughs> I think Apple found out I paid off the iPhone and they're like, whoa, make it shitty. Make it shitty. <laughs> And it started, it crashed on me when I was in Cleveland. I was trying to drive from Cleveland back to Detroit where I picked up the rental car. And my phone kept crashing. I don't know if you've ever tried to drive to a different city from a city you also don't live in with no phone, but like it's 2007 and you don't have a TomTom. -tom. You just, I had to Google directions before I left the hotel and I hand wrote directions. 8.7 miles, look for I-255. And I was like, <laughs> So I'm just driving, looking at paper, getting buzzed, because I'm veering. <laughs> and so it was scary, so I had to go get a new iPhone. And I'm, I've hit the age now, I guess, where it's not a fun purchase anymore. I used to be so excited when I got a new phone. I'd be like, I'm going to get a new phone. And it was so glamorous and fun and exciting. And I'm like, I wonder what the camera's going to be like. And now I don't care. Because I've had enough of them to realize, yeah, they just keep getting better, kind of, but I hate it. I hate it. Every time I look at it, I get sad. That's what I hate it. I hate going to the Apple store. It just feels like communism in there. That's what it feels like. You walk in, it's overly lit, you have no one smiling, you just get dashed to different tables, and they have all the phones out, and they all look the same, but they're not the same. You know what I mean? They're all like, oh, this one has a ha ha ha, and this one, but they all look the same. And it's just $1,200 for me to go, oh, I found the airport. Thank you. <laughs> it's just a rough week, man. I don't want it to be all complaints. Things are going well. Uh, I'm engaged. We're getting married in May, which I'm pretty pumped about. Yeah. Uh, first week of May, we're, uh, we're eloping, actually. We're eloping uh, to Italy, which is, uh, is awesome. I love... I wish the word elopement really described what an elopement is, because it does not. An elopement, you're like, oh, what's that? Is that like a, is that a venue? What is that? An elopement is where you realize you can have way more fun if nobody comes. That's what an elopement is. Elopement is where you're like, hey, we crunched the numbers and we realize we could go to Italy if none of you showed up. Because <laughs> if you guys show up, we're gonna have to do this where we live. But if none of you come, we can go to Italy. <laughs> And we weighed Italy and against your love and we Italy won. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it, shared it, subscribed to it, hit the notification bell, do all the things YouTube makes you want to do. Uh, other than that, I wanted to let you know that I'm constantly on tour. So go to my website, ZoltanComedy.com and see if I'm coming to a town near you. Thank you kindly.